Good morning, church. It's Monday morning. Take your Bibles and let's go to the book of 2 Samuel. Not 1 Samuel, but 2 Samuel. We're going through the life of David, and we've already covered up through the fact that uh, he has been anointed king. He's been in the army of Saul. Now he's had to flee Saul, and he's been out in the wilderness uh, running from Saul <clears throat> for some time. Finally, Saul is killed in battle, as well as Jonathan, and now Israel is left without a king. And so we'll see that David becomes king. But I want you to notice again the flaws in the man David. David was a good man, a man after God's own heart. But David was not a perfect man. He did follow the Lord. He had a great deal of faith in God. And we're going to see that in our scriptures today. There are a lot of positive things to say about David. And yet David had his flaws. Uh, one of those is, is David's going to marry several wives he started off with Saul's daughter, Michael. Uh, that didn't pan out. And finally, she, when he had to flee Saul, Saul took her and gave her to another man. She would become David's wife again, but it was kind of one of those situations where uh, he set her up a house somewhere and never had anything to do with her because she sided with her dad in the rebellion and so forth. And she was always critical of David. But notice with me in chapter 2, verse 1. And it happened after this, that is after the death of Saul, after the death of Jonathan, and the Philistines had routed the army of Israel. David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to one of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said to him, Go up. David said, Where shall I go up? And he said, To Hebron. But notice how meticulous David is. And you will find this on numerous occasions when David is in battle. He said, Lord, should I go forward and fight? And God would say, go forward, the victory is yours. And then at the time he'll say, Lord, shall we go forth to fight? And, they, and God would say, no, wait. I want you to go around behind them. And when you hear the wind coming through uh, the trees sounding like an army, then I want you to come up behind the enemy. David was a man who, who sought the Lord in the smallest of things. I mean, he was a man of faith and he believed that God was in charge of his destiny and that Israel belonged to God and he wanted to be glorifying to God. And so that's what made David such a good leader. He was a good man to have on the throne because he, he loved his people. He grew up a shepherd. He wasn't rich when he was growing up. He was persecuted. He understood that politics can get the better of someone. And that someone can use their power, as Saul did, to persecute their enemies unjustly. He understood all those life lessons. But he would have been better off seeking that same advice concerning his family. You know, we, the closest thing to us outside our relationship with God is our family. And I want you to look at verse number 2. So David went up from there, and his two wives... Now, he actually has three wives, but Michael didn't go with him. Like I said, she's kind of isolated from him, although she's still alive at this time. But he has two wives. One is Ahinnom, another is Abigail. And David brought up some men with him, and they went up to Hebron. Then the men of Judah, in verse 4, they came and they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, The men of Jabesh Gilead were the ones who buried David. Saul. And so immediately these Judaites, which David is a Judaite, he's from the tribe of Judah. Uh, these Judeans come and they say, you're going to be our king. We anoint you as king. And David accept that because God had told him he would be king. But the point here is he's starting off on a, when, when you start off a little bit wrong, as did Samson picking a wife that you should have never chosen because she wasn't a believer. She was of the Philistines and, and your mom and dad told you not to. When you start off, eventually when you get way on out there down the line, you're so far off. You may only be one degree off when you start off, but when you get way on down the line, it has multiplied. And here David is with several wives. Eventually, it's going to list seven wives and some concubines. David's going to have relationship 
and children by all those. And then he's going to take another wife that's not even his wife. And David just doesn't raise his family the way David ought to. And I don't know why it is that the Gideons and the Davids and Solomon, Solomon's, <coughs> excuse me, Solomon is the wisest man in the world, the Bible says, at that time. You know, and he has 700 wives. I mean, my goodness, don't these guys realize that if you don't seek God in all things as to who to take as a wife? Now, I do recognize that in that day and time, because kings wanted to have as many descendants as possible, and if you only had one wife, you probably only could have, you know, if you're fortunate, 10, 12 kids, as Jacob had 12 sons and, <clears throat> and some daughters, or a daughter. But, you know, if you got multiple wives, you can have, as Gideon did, Gideon had 70 sons. And so now you've got all these descendants whom you can trust, that they have, a, they have an interest in making sure the dynasty continues. I understand all that. But when you break God's rules, one man, one woman for one lifetime, then you are bound to have suffering. And that's what's going to happen in the life of David as we look forward. David was a good king, but it's in this one area. And he goes after, and we're not going to talk about this today so much, but he goes after another man's wife when he already had seven of his own and access to any other woman out there who wasn't married. You, you just can't violate God's law and things not fall apart. So we're at the great point of celebration. David is becoming king. He's 30 years, 30 years old. He's now reached that point of fulfilling the prophecy that he would be king over Israel. At least he's over Judah now. Soon he will be over Israel. But David sows the seeds of discord and the seeds of destruction in his own family. And we'll see that down the line. Listen, do family God's way. Because if you don't, no matter what else you do in life, how great a reputation you may have, eventually it's going to come back to haunt you. Let's pray together. Father, I pray that you'll help us even in the small things of this world to always give you preeminence. We're thankful that we can see David did that often. And yet, Father, when it came to his own personal life and to his family, that he did not seek out your word and obey your commands. We bless you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen.